Thank you for joining us today. My name is Greg Quirk and I'm the Technical Marketing Manager at Semiconductor Insights. With me, as always, is the always entertaining Alan Yogasingham, SI Supply Chain Manager. We've already taken apart a Sony LCD, so looking at the industry leader in plasma felt like a logical choice. By definition, plasma is a state of matter where atoms are ionized by adding energy. Plasma is also the liquid component of blood, but I'm guessing you can figure out which type of plasma we use in television. It's not blood. In the plasma video display, electricity is used to illuminate a gas stored in small cells coated with phosphor. These tiny cells number in the hundreds of thousands and are positioned between two plates of glass that make up the display. When a voltage is applied, an electric current flows through the gas in each cell, simulating the gas atoms to release ultraviolet photons. It's this ultraviolet radiation that excites the phosphor lining on the inside wall of each cell, giving us our visible light. Let's see. By panning over the board, you can identify many Panasonic labeled chips. As opposed to Apple's method of stamping other people's ICs with their own markings, we can't make that assumption with Panasonic. Why? Because not only is Panasonic an OEM, they also feature a division that manufactures their own semiconductors. This gives their designs more of an in-house feel as they can have more control over what is developed to fit their needs. We can see the channel decoder LSI for digital satellite broadcast reception here. This integrates functions for digital satellite communications and broadcast on a single chip. It implements a channel decoder without needing lots of external components. And near that is the single chip high definition system LSI. This chip provides the back end processing necessary for receiving digital HD TV broadcasts. Transport stream decoding, MPEG videos and audio decoding, peripheral functions and system processing. And there's a couple of analog devices parts on there too. There's a 10-bit integrated multi-format SDTV HDTV video decoder and RGB graphics digitizer. This is a single chip multi-format video decoder and graphics digitizer supporting the conversion of the S video or composite standard into a digital format. The second analog devices part is an audio codec with an embedded Sigma DSP processor. This integrates high performance analog and digital IOs with a powerful audio specific programmable core featuring full 28 bit processing, fully programmable dynamics processor, and delay memory. And don't forget about the 2 LPDA 512 megabit DDR2 SD RAM. Not only on that board, but there is another 128 megabits of LPDA DDR SD RAM on this board too. And there's other memory too. Spansion has a 16 megabit boot sector flash memory on this board. I'm guessing that has all the default startup information stored on it. Look at this, there's an Altera Cyclone 2 FPGA. We've actually done some analysis on a Cyclone 2 part in the past. It was a 90 nanometer device with 9 metal and a single poly layer. From the dive photo, you can see three columns of memory, with each column containing 43 blocks for a total memory of about 600k bits. The embedded multipliers run the length of the die in two columns, with each column holding 43 multipliers for a total of 86. There are four PLLs on the die, located in each corner. In between each PLL, there are four large I.O. strips running along each edge of the die. Thanks for joining us today for a teardown of the Panasonic TH42PX75 42-inch plasma screen high-definition TV. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please email us at teardowntv at semiconductor.com. For more information about our company, please visit www.semiconductor.com.